Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. So, as promised, this is episode 1 of a new tutorial series on how to make a game for iOS and Android using the Unity game engine and C Sharp. If you want to make a game for iPad, iPhone, Samsung, then this small series for beginners will bring you through that process step by step. What will we be making? A fun, simple game called Tiny Planets. But first of all, here's a big shout out and thank you to Production Crate, the sponsor of this video. This website is filled to the brim with epic assets you can use in your own game projects, like crazy cool explosion animations, lightning sparks, stunning magic powers and so much more. They also have a giant collection of top-notch quality sound effects and musics for your games. With that said, we'll be making Tiny Planets, a fast-paced reflex game where you need to stop cute little planets from colliding with each other. It's actually a game I made for PC during the second Blackthorn Prod Game Jam, which you can play directly in your browser, but now we're remaking it for touch devices. Note that I won't be teaching how to make any game arts during this series. If you want to learn more about that, I'll have some great videos on the topic linked in the description. We'll be focusing instead on setting up Unity projects for iOS and Android games, as well as programming, UI, and perhaps also adding cool particle effects and sounds to juice things up a bit. Okay, now that I've done the presentations, I'll be handing my brother Liam the mic so he can bring you through the first steps of creating this cool little game. Hey, Liam here, so let's get started. So I'm in this brand new Unity project, and in my scene, I've just got these cute mini planets. All right guys, so because we're making a mobile game, it is super important that we can test out our game on a mobile device. Thankfully, Unity have developed an awesome application called Unity Remote 5, that allows us to test out our Unity game directly on our mobile. There are a couple of things we have to do to make this all work and it's slightly different depending on if you're developing your game for an iOS device or an Android device. I'm going to start off by showing you how to set everything up for iOS and if you're developing for an Android, you can skip to that part of the video using the timestamps link in the description. Alright, so let's get started with iOS. Of course, the first thing that we have to do is to install the Unity Remote 5 application from the App Store. That's the only thing that we have to set up on our iOS device. Now just connect your device to your computer using a lightning cable and we will now set up a few things on the computer. First of all, you have to have iTunes installed on your computer. Next off, inside of our project, we need to let Unity know that the target platform we are building for is iOS. To do so, just go under File Build Settings. There you'll see a list of all the different platforms you can build your game for. Let's click on iOS and press on the Switch Platform button. If you do not see this button, it's because when you installed Unity, you did not choose to install the iOS Build Support Package. If this is your case, you should see a button that says Open Download Page. Just click on that button and it will start to install the iOS Build Support. Once that is done, there is just one last thing we have to do. Go to Edit, Project Settings. Over there, click on the Editor tab and you should see a Device drop-down. Select any iOS device. And there we go, it should now work perfectly. So making sure your iOS device is connected to your computer, open up the Unity Remote 5 application and press play in the editor. If you followed all the steps, you should see that your game appears on your device. If for whatever reason your game does not appear on your device, restart Unity and try again. Sometimes you just have to do this, so don't panic. Alright, let's now check out how to do the same process but for an Android device. The first thing to do is to of course install the Unity Remote 5 application on the Play Store. Once that is done, go to your phone settings, open up the section that says About Phone, and then you should see a section that says Build Number. If you click on this section multiple times, it will enable the developer mode on your device. Now, with the developer mode turned on, if you go back to the settings page, you should see a new section called Developer Options. Open it up and then scroll down until you find the USB debugging option. Turn that on and there we go, we have now done everything that we have to do on our Android device. Back on your computer, you have to install the Android Studio application. So go to the link that we put in the description of the video and click on the download button. During the installation process, it will give you the choice of what you want to install. You only need to install the Android SDK to make this work. 
Once everything has been installed successfully, we can head over back to Unity. Over there, open up the Preferences tab. Once it is opened up, click on the External Tools tab. You should see a section for Android SDK. If you click on the Browse button, you will probably get a message saying that Unity detected the SDK folder. So just click Yes on that message. If you did not get the message, just browse your folders and manually select the Android SDK folder that we just downloaded before. Next off, inside of our project, we need to let Unity know that the target platform we are building for is Android. To do so, just go under File, Build Settings. There you'll see a list of all the different platforms you can build your game for. Let's click on Android and press on the Switch Platform button. If you do not see this button, it's because when you installed Unity, you did not choose to install the Android Build Support Package. If this is your case, you should see a button that says Open Download Page. Just click on that button and it will start the installation process for the Android Build Support. Once that is done, there's just one last thing that we have to do. So go to Edit Project Settings. Over there, click on the Editor tab and you should see a Device drop-down. Select the Any Android Device option. And there you go, it should now work perfectly. So making sure your Android device is connected to your computer using your charging cable, open up the Unity Remote 5 application and press play in the editor. If you followed all the steps correctly, you should see that your game appears on your device. Again, if for any reason it is not appearing on your device, restart Unity and try again. Sometimes you just have to reboot Unity, so don't panic. So everything is working fine, we can see our game on our device, but everything looks pixelated and stretched out weirdly. To fix this, let's first of all change the aspect ratio of our game from free aspect to 16 by 9 landscape. Then if you go under edit, project settings and open up the editor tab, you should see a line for Unity remote resolution. It's probably set to downsize by default, so change it to normal. This should fix the issue of the low resolution. Finally, I only want players to be able to play our game on landscape mode and not on portrait mode. To do so, I'll head over to Edit, Project Settings, and I'll open up the Player section. Once you're in the Player section, open up the Resolution and Presentations tab. Under there, you should see a line that says Default Orientation. Choose Auto Rotation and then uncheck Portraits and Portrait Upside Down. This will make sure your game can only be played in landscape modes. And there you go, we have now finished setting everything up. I'll pass the mic back to Noah. Alright, it's Noah again. So in this video we presented the project and set everything up. In the next in this series we will actually do some programming and have a fun, playable game by the end of it. We both hope you're looking forward to that. In the meantime, if you want to learn how to make more games using Unity with me and Liam as your instructors, consider checking out our Udemy courses. One of them teaches you the fundamentals of game dev, game art and c -sharp programming whereas the other brings you through the entire process of making a top-down shooter game, from art and animation to programming enemy AI and making boss battles. Alright, a big thanks to Blackthorn Prod's amazing patrons, who support this channel financially every month. And with that said, stay tuned for episode 2 of this iOS and Android game-making series, and plenty more cool things. Okay, cheers!